Welcome back to Sawtooth Tactical. Gun owners are often portrayed in a negative light, or at least guns are, by the mainstream media as something that is so dangerous. But I view firearms as a life-saving device, as a safety item. And I've got an article here from Ammo Land News by Rob Morse that kind of proves that. So normally I do these Second Amendment news article stories on Sunday, but because of Halloween, I put out a really cool range video where we shot every gun behind me in one video. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. It just dropped a couple days ago. Today, we're doing that Second Amendment news story. Before we get started, just want to thank everyone that subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate you guys. So this article is titled, Good Guys Save Lives, But the FBI Can't See Them. This is by Rob Morris at Amoland News. Amoland.com. Dr. John Lott issued another stunning report. Dr. Lott at the Crime Prevention Research Center, CR CPRC, says there were massive errors in the FBI's reports on attempted mass murderers. It also says that armed citizens are amazing. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Though the FBI seems to have a strong bias against counting attacks that were stopped by ordinary citizens. This is what Lott found. Dr. Lott went back seven years of data and identified 360 active shooter incidents, though he admits he probably missed several more. In that data, he found 124 times where an ordinary armed citizen stopped the attacks. Over that same time period, the FBI identified only 252 active shooter incidents, and they could only find 11 examples that were stopped by armed citizens. There's a big discrepancy there. Those differences are huge. Lott found that some 34% of active shooter incidents were stopped by armed citizens, not the 4% cited by the FBI. This is important because FBI reports are reprinted as truth in the mainstream media. So they use those statistics in order to make guns look bad, to make gun owners look bad, to pass gun control legislation that infringes on our rights. When in fact, the statistics should work for us. In some cases, the FBI classified armed parishioners as church security guards rather than as armed citizens. In my mind, a security guard is a licensed and paid position. These armed men and women were not paid to attend church services. Lott admits he excluded another 24 cases because the armed civilians stopped the armed attack before the murderer fired his gun. Isn't that the best case outcome? So those weren't even included in his numbers, the more truthful numbers, because the bad guy never even was able to get a round off, which is best case scenario, right? The media and gun control advocates seem concerned with the worst possible outcomes when civilians defend themselves. And in my, in my opinion, they want the worst possible outcomes because it helps them push their narrative. They want to see, you know, high casualty events because it helps them pass gun control. They don't want lives saved by guns, which is a really sad thing. Yes, there is always the possibility that a bystander could be injured, but we have yet to see an armed citizen shoot an innocent bystander. We have yet to see that. That means that as far as anybody knows, no good guy with a gun has ever actually hurt someone that was innocent when trying to stop a bad guy with a gun. In contrast, we know that the police have accidentally shot and killed the armed defender at least once. That's not something that happens very often because the police usually arrive long after the shooting is over. And that's exactly why we carry guns. Because the police can't be there at every minute when something bad happens, you need to be able to rely on yourself 
to defend yourself and your family and other innocent people. The police, as good of a job as they want to do and as they try to do, they can't be everywhere at all times, right? Either the murderer is usually dead or he was long gone before the police arrived. A Fox News report recalled the incident earlier this year at the Greenwood Mall in Indiana where legally armed 22-year-old Elisha Dickin successfully stopped a would-be mass shooter just seconds after the killer opened fire in the mall food court area. Elisha Dickin is a hero. Uh, we might have to try to do the Dickin drill on this channel sometime. I know every other channel's done it, but what he did was very heroic. It was awesome. At a distance estimated to be 40 yards, Dickon began firing 10 rounds, of which 8 hit the shooter, fight, fatally wounding him. He was hailed as a hero by Greenwood Police Chief James Eisen. 40 yards with a handgun is not an easy distance to get 8 out of 10 shots. This guy trained, practiced, and carried his firearm and did what all of us that carry firearms should Hopefully never have to do, but if we are ever put in that position to be able to perform like he did, it's awesome. What we really want to know is how effective armed defenders are when we exclude gun-free zones where honest citizens are disarmed by law. The results are amazing. When they're allowed to go armed, ordinary citizens stopped mass murder 51% of the time in the last few years. That's more than half. That's that's awesome. And that is also why people that want to murder people choose gun-free zones. Which is, then you have to make that choice. Get caught with it or get caught without it. You know what I mean? I'm all about following the rules. But they choose gun-free zones for a reason because they're soft targets. This explains why murderers choose gun-free zones. It also explains why anti-gun politicians want more gun-free zones. It might explain why the politicized FBI won't report the data honestly. Like I said, I hate to say this, but the anti-gunners, they want more gun-free zones so that, and again, I hate to say this, so that people can go in and commit these atrocities and not have a good guy with a gun there to stop them. And that advances the anti-gun narrative to push more gun control, to take more of our rights away. But the real statistics show that good guys with guns do stop bad guys with guns. It happens all the time. And uh, so keep yourselves armed out there. Be vigilant. Carry with one in the chamber. Tra practice, train, and be ready. Hopefully, hopefully you never have to use your gun in defense of yourself or others. But in case you do, be ready for it. Be the good guy with the gun. And maybe someday you'll be the hero that saves the day. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and drop me a like. Please share this with anyone that uh, maybe that needs to know the actual statistics. Or just anyone that you might think might like this video. And uh, leave me a comment what you think about this. Because uh, if you're like me, you carry a gun concealed. You train with it, you practice with it, and you hopefully never have to use it. But if you do, you're ready for it. I do love you guys from Saw Tactical. Stay strapped or get clapped.